want to welcome everyone from out there while we're in here today. Pray that each one of you are doing well. I've been praying for you each week, each day of this week, as time moves on through this difficulty that we're going through that I want to read some scriptures to enlighten our heart. If you have your Bibles with you in your home, so I bet you do, let's turn to the, get that music, on. there we go, to the book of Joshua, and I'll give you a little time to do that. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1. Hello, honey. That honey is Debbie, this back here, and she, we started church, and she was, honey, you're late for church, and this is, this is the only time you didn't have to really get that ready, so... Anyway, got Heather here with me. I've got Andrew, of course. Thank you all for being here to help us with this, to bless our church. And I found a straggler outside. His name was Jay, sitting up here. He said, well, someone needs to take the offering. So, um, Jay, just don't go to sleep during the sermon, will you? My buddy, if you do, I'm going to call on you and wake you up anyway. <laughs> oh, mercy. Anyway. In Joshua chapter 1, I want to have us look at verses 8 and 9. And I want to have this really um, penetrate our heart. Uh, that The success of Joshua's mission would be in his personal obedience to the law of God and meditating upon it, to ponder, to involve uh, reading and rereading the word that, that he had, the Old Testament. I want you to notice that the law was already written at this time. Let me read verse 8 and 9. Let this be part of our walk as we work through this process of glorifying God in difficult times. Isn't it amazing how uh, opportunity for our faith increases greatly when difficult times happen? We're talking with the men this morning in the men's group and had a beautiful conversation about how what we think is certain is really an illusion. There's only one thing certain, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, the King of kings and the Prince of prince. He is certain. He is certainty, and we will put our faith and follow him in all, just like Joshua did. Let me read Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Wow. Well, what will happen? Then for your, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. What a formula for success. Obey and abide by God's word and success. And then in verse 9 he says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then I want to read one more passage. It happens to be in Philippians. We're in Philippians. I believe it's Philippians 4.19. It is 4.19, right where I turned. Let me start in verse 18. But I have received everything in full and have abundance. I am ample supplied, having received a dear friend of mine, Ephroditus, that you have sent me. He is a fragrant and aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Paul was sent him when he was in prison. In verse 19, and this is part of our verse 2, And my God will supply all your needs. How will you supply all my needs, Lord? According to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I love chapter, verse 21. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. And church, I greet you. This building is not the church. The church is who I'm addressing now. You're the living stones. I'm looking at you. Where are you? You're in the camera. <laughs> um, you're the living stones. You're built upon the foundation of the prophets and the apostles with the cornerstone being Christ Jesus. And he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And let me tell you, God's abundance has a supply that never ends. It'll always be there. Greet every saint. The brethren who are with me, they greet you. And the brethren that are with me here greet you also as you in your homes. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's house. Well, all the saints bless you, especially those of the Turner house and of the Bab house and of the Diperno house. We greet you. I love verse 23. 
It sounds like a sermon, doesn't it? It's not, though. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. In all part of life, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ has been in my spirit. He's taken me through things that have been difficult. He will take us through this. He will create us a longing to be together like we've never had before. I miss you guys. I want to be with you. I want to hold you. I want to touch you. I love my sheep. This is creating within me a longing to be with you again. And we will be back together again. There's one thing that we'll always have. You need the gathering of God's people together so we can work with one another. Our minds can connect with one another. That we can glorify and praise God all the days of our life. We're going to continue praising. But the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your little spirit, with your inner person. We're going to talk about that inner person today. That the Lord is with your inner person. He's there. He lives there with the Holy Spirit guiding and directing you. And we're going to grab a hold of God where he is in this difficulty in our life right now. And we're going to turn that into a blessing that will make us rejoice and be glorious in him after we get on the other side of this. And church, we will get on the other side of this. We do that by meditating on his word, praying for one another. Y'all pick the phone up, you call one another, especially the older ones in the church. I guess that would be me. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm good. Call, call the other people, call one another. Those that are alone, little Vi, I know she's alone in the home. Gregory, he's living by himself. Call one another that we can pick up one another. I sent an email out also. If any of you need anything, if I got it, you can have it. And so if I don't have it, we'll find someone else that's got it, and we'll, we'll, we'll find it. Help supply uh, your needs as we get through this. This is what the church is about. Loving one another, holding up one another. You also have an opportunity to be very graceful amongst a time of turmoil and fear. Let Christ shine through you. Let him see let these people see the beauty of Christ shining through them. Let those beautiful little stones line up with the foundation's cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And be the light that this place needs in a time of a little bit of darkness. Make a difference. Pray for one another. Pray for the vaccine to be given. Pray that God will be glorified in this. Pray, 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 pray. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we love you and we thank you. Father, in a, in a way, Father, we thank you for what's happening. Because, Father, it's times like these that we see that we need you so much. And, Father, many times things kind of rock along pretty easy. And, Father, we kind of have you with us. But, Father, we've got you in front of us now. Because this is something that only you can guide us through. And, Father, just show us where you are. And we're right there. And, Father, I see you right in the middle of this. And, Father, I see you having people look to you in a way, Father, than ever have before. Father, all the things that make us think we have certainty are so uncertain. Father, it's just an illusion in our mind. You're the only thing that's certain. And, Father, we, we give this to you. And, Father, we praise and we worship and we honor you. And, Father, show us how to work through this in a way that shows your love so mighty that people are so attracted. Father, they come to you by the droves. Father, strengthen our faith. Make us stronger, Father. I know sometimes that's difficult for us to go through because those fires get hot. But, Father, you're right there with us. And, Father, many, many times the lion's den for Daniel, Father, was difficult. But, Father, you shut the lion's mouth. So, Father, let us be the Daniel in this epidemic that's going on. Because he searched you. He sought you. Father, he walked with you. Now, Father, may we walk with you in a way that glorifies you through this. Father, let the words today that I preach be, be those only of yours, Father, that will glorify you. And, Father, we'll take this inner person that you so have transformed by the new birth. And, Father, you'll set it on that path once more, Father, as we will confess our sin and repent and get right and walk with you. Father, we love you and thank you. And, Father, be with Heather. I know you will be, Father, as she leads us in worship. Father, we love you and thank you for it's in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm so grateful this morning that we still have the opportunity to be together, even if if remotely. And and I was even reminded this morning of the fact that uh, that in situations like this, so often we have the opportunity to just reevaluate and to reassess our understanding of the character of God. 
And this morning we have the opportunity to celebrate and to meditate on the truth of who we know God to be and the way that he so tenderly and lovingly takes care of us. And so this morning through worship and music, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate the truth of who we know our God to be. And God, we're so grateful for that this morning, that there is no one like you, God. Because there is no one like you, we know that your character is dependable, God. You are the only one who is dependable. God, we know that you're in complete control and that there's nothing in this life that has escaped your attention, God. As Pastor Mike said this morning, that, that this passed right through your hands, God, and you allowed it to come. God, so in the middle of all this, God, may we have your eyes, may we have your perspective, may we understand your purposes in all this, God, in the, in the little finite ways that we can. God, may we understand our role in this, God. But above all else, may we return to meditating on your character, God. May it be a source of hope and a source of peace, God, a source of healing in very difficult and trying times. God, we're so grateful for you and the relationship that you established with us, God, at that moment of salvation. God, when we chose you above all else, God, and may we continue to choose you above all else every day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Heather. I apologize because I forgot our newest member is here too. It's little Lucas. He's here. Heather and I were talking earlier this morning and Andrew and, and we figured that Lucas is his one month old birthday is today and he was put into isolation because he didn't come to church for the first <laughs> couple of Sundays. So anyway, we're going to try to break it out so he can... He's back in church even when he probably should be home. But anyway, glad he's here. I'm going to have one more little statement. Then I'll have Heather come do our uh, meditation music and I'll deliver our sermon. I wrote this to each one of you earlier in the week. I just want us to be reassured that Jesus has all knowledge and all authority over the natural and the supernatural forces of this world. He knows exactly when the virus start, where the virus started and he knows exactly where it's going next. He has complete power to restrain it or not. And that's what's happening. Neither sin nor Satan nor sickness or sabotage is stronger than our Lord Jesus Christ. He's never backed into a corner. He's never forced to tolerate what, God's, what, what he does not will and desire. The counsel of the Lord stands forever and the plans of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. The plans of his heart include us glorifying and praising God to the fullest, especially in the deepest, darkest times that we think that we're in. I praise God, and like I say, in the, in, in the strange way for this event happening. I pray it brings people back to their knees and back to a, a calling to what God has had them to do, and that's to worship and glorify him. And that's what we're going to continue to do here as Heather comes and leads us in our meditation. Thank you, Heather. As many of you know, I like to gather rocks, especially hearts that look like rocks that look like hearts. And I've gathered a few that I've found even around here, and they've got scripture on them. Let me just read these to you to give you some comfort. Psalms 52, I'm sorry, Psalms 55, 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will give you his angels charge. Of you to guard you in all your ways. Be still and know that I am God. All things work together for the good for those who love God. And we love God. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29. 11. We serve a wonderful, precious, loving God. One that even though knew that we went sin's route and desired our way more than his way, came back for us, died upon the cross for us, and took away the sting of death because of our sin. And now because he lives, we live. Because he was passed in death, we passed in death. And because he was arose from the grave, we arose from the grave. And now we're here in Ephesians. I was pondering which way to go. You know, just saying, well, Lord, just brought to my mind a couple of, of people. Barbara, I know you've got friends around you, but Barbara's by herself. And um, 
both barbers are by themselves that are there. And also there's there's one special little little person that's gonna have a baby pretty quick. Debbie and I were driving over here and we read a text from our niece and she's pregnant and she was having to go to the doctor by herself and her husband couldn't go with her and it was so sterilized so to speak that it was taking the the joy out of her having her precious little memories of the child with everyone gathered around seeing the sonograms sonogram right honey sonograms and things like that that they do and she was there with the doctor by herself and having to come out and I just my heart went out for her and I thought of little Erin um just going to have her little baby, little Sammy, before long. And I just reach out to her and pray for her, that God will lift her up on angels' wings and that she will be able to soar in a way as she goes through the difficult time of kind of doing this by her own. I mean, I know Chris is right there and her mom and dad are all there, but going to the doctor alone is such a glorious time. It's just got to be very hurtful and, and sad. So let's lift her up as we can. And think of others that you can lift up and call one another and, and love on them. Um, as I said, we're in Ephesians, and last week we looked at verses 14 and 15 of chapter 3 of Paul's second prayer for the Ephesians. And after giving the reasons for bowing his knees before God the Father, we've got a good reason, right? Now, I believe that Paul has in mind God's fatherly attitude towards his creation. And this understanding is confirmed in the fact that Paul further describes a father as the one from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Paul's referring to the whole family of God, Jews and Gentiles alike, who are related to him through Jesus Christ by the unifying work of the Holy Spirit. This has been the point of the letter up to now that Paul is writing the Ephesians. So this mysterious union of all believers referred to as the church, the body of believers in Christ, becomes a basis of Paul's prayer. In the prayer itself, Paul petitions God for four things for the Ephesians and now us as we are the living stones, again, placed in the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ being the cornerstone. And here they are, number one, that they and we would be strengthened through the Holy Spirit of God. God, strengthen us. That they and now us would be rooted and grounded in love. Oh, Lord, root and ground us in love. That they would comprehend the immensity of Christ's love. Oh, Lord, show us the love of Christ. Father, we know he went to the grave and arose from the cross, but, Father, he did this out of love. So, Father... Let us not be ashamed, but let us see the beauty of the love that he has provided. The Lamb, Father, sacrifice for us. So let us, Father, see that love. And number four, that they would be filled to God's own fullness. And that is my prayer. This is the prayer of Paul's my prayer for us, too, that we're filled to the fullness of God. That's our practice. Remember, our position is holy without blame. We're practicing and we're becoming more like Christ. We'll read more about that later. Let's take the first point in the prayer. Paul prays that they would be strengthened through the Spirit. Look at this wording. In the inner man, look at this, I pray that he, God, would grant you, the Ephesians, and of course now us, according to the riches of his glory. What do you want us, Paul? What are you granting that God won't grant God to grant us? To be strengthened with power through his Spirit. Where? In the inner man. Ephesians 3, 16, that inner man. Allow me to open this up a little bit, a little bit regarding our inner person or inner man. Psychologically, we are all in constant danger of become discouraged by loss of inner motivation. This epidemic, pandemic, or whatever they call it, that's going around right now, could absolutely create a discouragement by loss of inner motivation. I want you to seek out the strength of the Holy Spirit and the walk of Christ to guide you through this. And there will be a rejoicing and a beauty that's there that would be uncomprehensible if we wouldn't be going through this pandemic right now. You see, Paul, just three verses back, wrote to the Ephesians, and he told them, I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are your glory. I, as your shepherd, ask you not to lose heart because of the many tribulations that are going on, because they can be used for the glory of God. In order to become strengthened, the Ephesians must turn to the Spirit-strengthening power from our Father's riches. God in heaven, He will bestow on us a strength that wells up from the depths of our being, which Paul calls the inner person, the inner man, the inner woman, the inner man. Look at me at verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 3. I pray that God grants you to be strengthened. How? With the power through His Spirit. Where? In the inner man. 
The inner, the inner man term is very interesting to me. Paul is referring to the innermost personality of all of us. Our being, our heart of hearts, our truth of self. It's what comes out of the mouth, comes from the heart, be it good or evil. We see that in scripture also. We see a comparison of this inward self with the outward self in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Look at me with that, please. 7 and 16. But we have, look at this, this is beautiful. This is just beautiful. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Oh, that treasure. So that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. Church, you have no power except for the power of God that's worthy to glorify him. Verse 16, he says, therefore, because of this beautiful treasure in earthly vessels. I don't know if you knew it or not, but in the olden days in the Jewish homes, they had big vessels, clay vessels. They got them from the potter's house. We read about, I better get back over here. They read about that in the potter's house. <laughs> He's a wanderer. Get him back. They have those big pots that are laying there. And what you put in that pot determined its worth and value. Some they were put in with trash. Some their valuables were put in. Let me tell you. God is using the description here through Scripture. You have this treasure and earthen vessel so that the surpassing greatness of his power will be of God and not from ourselves. So God in this clay and earthen vessel has placed his Holy Spirit and his Son, Jesus Christ, in the vessel. Makes it so valuable that it is eternity. Makes it just beautiful and wonderful. It's the same pot but has different contents. And let me tell you, if your pot's like mine, this pot, it's cracked. It's getting cracks, too. It's cracked. But let me tell you what oozes out of those cracks from that beautiful hidden treasure inside. The beautiful grace and glory of God oozes out. It's like lights coming out of a cracked vessel. God will heal by his grace. Therefore, in verse 16, it says, don't you lose heart. But through our outer man, although it's decaying, yet our inner person, our inner man, is being renewed day by day. And our question might be amongst ourselves, how or what is the process of renewing this inner person? I think that's important. We have this treasure dwelling in our inner person. It is the power of the triune God. It's the rational and moral I. It's the essence of the self, which is conscience of itself as a moral personality lying within us. On the diagram that I gave y'all on the, on the uh, sermon that I sent out, sermon notes, I want us to take a quick look at this. This is how human identity is restored. We see the unified self. That was God with Adam and Eve. They're unified. They had all of their reality understood. They had promises given. They knew what absolute truth was. They knew what absolute value was. And now the divided self because of sin brings this. We need to belong. We need self-esteem. We need strength because we're rejected. We're ashamed and we're weak. But when Christ came in and united us back to God, we now belong. We're not rejected. We are worthy. We're accepted. We're not ashamed. And we're not weak. And we're going to need these qualities of Christ and the mind of Christ to get through what we're going through today. Because you do belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're not rejected because there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And you are worthy because you have the righteousness of Christ. You're accepted. You're not ashamed. And you're not weak. You see, to restore human identity that was lost in sin, it's necessary for God to address both aspects of the divided self. But regards to powering our inner self, God uses his Holy Spirit to reveal the power he has strengthened us in the inner self. God gives his followers, you and I, or me and the Ephesians in this case, the Holy Spirit so that we may know him better more and more. And since the Holy Spirit is God's spirit, it knows the thoughts of God, reveals those thoughts to us believers. As long as our heart is not hardened by sin, as long as our heart is not hardened by the pride that comes with it, as long as our hearts are soft and open, we get to see the things of God because we're constantly with him, walking with him, and he reveals those thoughts to us believers. Since the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit, let me say it again, it absolutely knows all the thoughts and secrets of God and reveals those thoughts to us, the believers. And this is what the letter to the Ephesians was doing. The Holy Spirit was revealing the beautiful thoughts of God for Paul to pin down and write to the Ephesians so they could understand that they are now one in Christ and now that they would be powered by the Holy Spirit and that they belong to the family of God. And Paul is now praying for them that they would see that 
Jesus knew that his disciples would need power to carry out their mission, to be witnesses to the entire world. We can even read in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, but you, disciples, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. You see, Christians have the access to power, revelation, and wisdom from the Holy Spirit, just as the Apostle Paul wrote to the believers at Ephesus, the Ephesians. And he prays in chapter 1 of verse 17 through 20, which is the first prayer. He was praying. He says, oh, Ephesians, and now us, I keep asking that God, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why? So that you may know him more and more and better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. What kind of power did you have, Lord, in mind to give us? Verse 20 says, The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. That is power. His power rose you from the dead cleansed you of your sin. The same power that raised Christ. That's why we are placed in death with Christ and risen from Christ, symbolized in baptism, symbol to walk a new life in the inner man that is strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. But how does God sometimes address the problems of this rejected self? As you all know, I felt rejected as a child because of the situations going on. And because, because of that, God used that rejection and brought me real close to him. It's amazing how God takes my bad deals and turns them into his great deals. I love that about him. So how does God address the problems of the rejected self? Are you feeling rejected? Are you feeling unworthy? Are you feeling not wanted? Are you feeling not loved because of what's going on? Let me tell you, the answer is that Christ himself took on our feelings of rejection. Christ owns those. Early in his ministry, for example, Jesus as a second Adam portrayed, was cast into the wilderness to face the temptations of Satan. But unlike Adam, Christ did not fall, and he unified himself, and he was not divided. He stayed in constant contact, never even getting out of the communication and intercession with God as he was God. Christ did not fall. He took it on himself because he was taking it away from you when you accept Christ as your Savior. These things are what Satan used to make you feel rejected and shame and punishment. But Jesus took those away from you so you can walk worthy with your head up, looking up into the heavens. And as in heaven, it will be done on earth. During those darkest hours of Christ, between 12 and 3, Jesus, our Lord, suffered the very essence of the rejected self so that you and I and the Ephesians and all believers would not have to. Therefore, we can now be free from punishment free from rejection, free from shame, free from all the results of the fall as we stay close to Christ, reunified with God. Look what the Apostle John tells us. <clears throat> I love this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The man who fears is not made perfect in love. See, the fear of punishment is, of course, an element of the rejected self. Christ's love cancels out our fear of punishment and abandonment as he took on this for us and he took his death in our place. The Apostle John is urging that we be perfected in Christ's love so that we might be free from the oppression of fear. And there's not any more better time than right now than to be perfected into the love of God. He is encouraging us to a greater intimacy in our relationship with Christ. Why? So that we can fully experience his love and that we find complete fulfillment in his work on the cross. And I promise you, we can find greater intimacy in our relationship with Christ so we might fully experience his love and we'll find complete fulfillment as we go through this pandemic because of the disease that sin carries with it. We can find a greater fulfillment with God. We can find greater intimacy along his side. I believe that is part of the purpose and the plan of God. It's always to draw his people closer and to show that he is the only one that anyone can be, have certainty in and depend upon. 
In this process of the inner man being strengthened by the Holy Spirit, I have identified three components in the process of becoming more like Christ, being transformed to His likeness. Let me tell you what they are. Being processed, the transformation of the inner man, number one, we need to have compassion towards ourselves. We need to have compassion towards ourselves. I'll explain that a little bit more. We need to be sure we are under conviction, and we also need to have confession. Again, I put a diagram in there. Let me just go over that diagram for a second as I go. Number one, we must have a compassion for ourselves, which reflects Christ's compassion for us. Let me say that again. We must have a compassion for ourselves, which reflects Christ's compassion for us. Knowing that he unconditionally accepts us will help us accept ourselves. This means accepting ourselves, both the good and the bad which are within us. Christ loves us as we are. And failure to love whom Christ loves is a sin. Accepted by Christ and ourselves, we regain a sense of belonging with him because we have the righteousness of Christ. Please allow the compassion of Christ to be delivered upon your soul so you can walk worthy by his grace and faith and be a beacon of light into the world. That's one way. Another way, we must also have awareness of a conviction concerning our sin. We must realize that those areas of our lives which are sinful and hinder our relationship, we need to know what those are. Remember, I'm not talking about our position with God, but I'm talking about our walk with God. We need to recognize the effect that sin has on us. And God will keep us to see our heart's condition when we ask Him. In Psalms 139, this, this is a prayer that I am, I'm using more and more now, especially with what's going on. I'm trying to realign even deeper, closer, my desire with God's desire, eliminating my desire. I only want His desire to be my desire as I walk through this and as I get through this and carry on further. Psalms 139. Lord, search me. Lord, you know my heart. Lord, see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of the everlasting. Show me, Lord, what I need to correct in my life. Lord, I am willing and able and I will do it. Oh, Holy Spirit, give me the power to see this. And after repenting of our sins, many times that hard heart, we talked about that this morning in the men's group. After repenting of our sins, our hard heart begins to be cured and softened, and our inner self gets strengthened when we what? Study God's Word. So important. I don't study God's Word to try to help someone else out, even though my sermons are. I study God's Word to correct myself and walk my ways with God so that I can be more like Him and represent Him more and more. You know what's amazing as I'm here preaching? I can still see the people where you sit, where you are, and it's like you're there. Larry, I know you're right there, and I don't have my boots on, but I'm saving those when we gather again. I see, every, I, it's amazing. There you are, and there you are, and there, it's just, it, God's so, so wonderful. He even gives, thank you for the memory, Lord, that you give me of what it looks like with the people here. Lord, thank you for that. But Lord, search me, know my heart, see if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the everlasting in Psalms, there's a question proposed being, how can a young man keep his way pure? Psalms 119, 9 through 11. How can a young man keep his way pure? It's answered, by living according to your word, O Lord. I seek you with all my heart. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. What a beautiful Psalms. Can God heal our heart when we recognize this obedience? Absolutely. Will God heal our heart when we recognize and repent from our sins? Absolutely. You see, true repentance is more than simply a resolute feeling of steadfast determination. Repentance manifests in itself a changed life. Many would ask, but Pastor, how can I do this? Let me tell you, the power of God the Holy Spirit will give us the insight and knowledge to understand this process. It's that power we're talking about that God will give us. This process is the Bible. It's our manual for living. Let me read you 2 Timothy 3.16. God breathed is his word and is useful. What's it useful for, Lord? For teaching, for rebuking. And by the way, don't let that word rebuking shock you. It just means restored. It will help restore you in alignment with God. That's what God's word does. Restored to a place of honor with him in your walk, not in your position. Your position is honor because you're the righteous of Christ. But this is your walk with God to be restored. 
be rebuked. It's used for teaching, rebuking, correcting. And look at this, and training in righteousness. If we're to live a life to the fullest as God intended, even as we walk through the pandemic that we're in now, we need to study and obey God's word, his written word, which keeps our hearts soft and pure, allowing us to be blessed in whatever we do. I want to issue a little bit of a warning to us here. There is a danger in knowing what is bad about ourselves. And if we're not careful, it will undermine our acceptance of ourselves with what Christ Jesus did for us. It will keep us in a cycle of shame, saying, I am no good, therefore I am rejected, and I'm worthless to all, even myself, I'm no good. Church, this must not be allowed to happen in our walk. You are holy and without blame in your position with God. Paul started this in Romans. He started thinking about his ways and having to go back to the truth, being there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. He was pondering the things that he did weren't right, and the things he didn't do with what he should do. And then all of a sudden he said, who could save me from this? And he said, oh yeah, now I remember there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. See, Paul needed that little break too, just like we do, to stop our negative naysaying and get back to that compassion that Christ has for us through his grace that we are worthy and we can get up and walk again. Do not let the cycle of shame saying I'm no good and I'm rejected dwell in the house of God. Let his victory and his righteousness take place there. It's essential to remind ourselves that Christ has accepted us and that our relationship with him is forever sealed by his love. Look with me at the following verses. As you can see, I have a reference for your position in Christ. I talk about that all the time. Let me give you a reference. In Hebrews 7, 26, we see the kind of high priest we have in Christ. Look at this. This is beautiful. Jesus is the kind of high priest we need because... He is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. And now I want to take us to Colossians chapter 1, verse 22. We see the transfer to us upon our believing in him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at this. Yet now he, Jesus, has reconciled you to himself. Through the, I'm sorry. Yet now he, God, has reconciled you, and the Ephesians, of course, and all believers, to himself. How? Through the death of Christ in his physical body. Okay, what's the result? Well, as a result, he was brought to you into his own presence, and now you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Wow. That's what God says. You are holy and blameless before him without a single fault. Because of your position in Christ Jesus. What a glorious love of God. What a beautiful Savior. What, 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 a, what a kind and loving, compassionate master we have. Last part. As we become aware of the problem areas in our lives, we must take time to confess them to God. Prayer and Bible study are absolutely crucial here, especially in this time of this pandemic I guess that's the right word. I'm kind of, I've said that word about a thousand times with this thing that's going on here, pandemic. Okay, I'll get over that. <laughs> Look, prayer, prayer and Bible study are crucial here. It's so important. And I mean for ourselves. Read God's word. Put your name in it. Let it apply to your own heart. We must commit the difficulty in our life to God in prayer. Ask him to help us change and develop more desirable behavior. See, Paul is praying that God would grant the power of the Holy Spirit to the people that were believers now. And that power could help them. But now we have the power that can be developed and add to a more desirable behavior because we have the scriptures of God. We must commit to the difficulty to God in prayer, ask him to help us change and develop a more desirable behavior. <clears throat> in addition to assuring us of Christ's continuing love and acceptance, the scriptures illuminated by God the Holy Spirit, provides us with the motivation and the power to change. You do not have the power to change. God has the power to change. And God's the only one that can direct you to change like him because he's the only one who knows himself. He knows himself intimately, thoroughly, completely. We don't know ourselves intimately, completely. Only God does, and we must go to him 
to find out what we need correction in. We must go to him to find out what we need the Holy Spirit's advice and power in. We want to become more like Jesus. It's Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, for us, that God will motivate us and empower us to live a life he desires for us to live. You see, the Bible also will give us various patterns for change. That is, specific helps on how to correct particular errors in our life. Proverbs is full of it. All of Paul's letters are full of how to correct things in our life. James writes about how to resist temptation. It's all through Scripture. And the design is to become more like Christ. That we can glorify and honor God. Self-acceptance, conviction of our sins, and confession to God will result, hear this, in a heightened self-esteem. As we regain self-esteem, we can turn to God in prayer and study His Word, and our behavior will change. What are we doing? We're putting our shame, our guilt, and our sin once more confessed upon the Lord and rethinking there's no condemnation, and we'll walk by the righteousness of God and the grace of God in the light of God, in the love of God, to do those things he's prepared for us beforehand. God has the power, and to God be the glory. We will find ourselves in control. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit, control. We're able to yield to our way and give in to God's way. His way and his desires become our desires. When we were lost in the fall, being a sense of belonging, we lost that. We lost a sense of belonging. We lost self-esteem and we lost control. They've all been restored. And now God will enable and empower the inner person within each of us. And our identity will be once more unified with God. So we won't have the fears that these things bring about. The psychosis of feeling not belonging. The psychosis of feeling ashamed. The psychosis of not being valued. It's all been healed and sealed in Christ Jesus. We've been reunited with God. The inner man is now being strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit with the example of Christ. To walk worthy. And in closing, as I've said, only God can reach and cure the inner man. And that is where he most wants to work within each one of us. You see, his work began in salvation. And after that, his works are in the manner of the inner man. Because that's where spiritual life exists and where it must grow. Only God's spirit can strengthen our spirits. He is the one who energizes. He's the one who revitalizes. And he is the very one who empowers us. No one else. But we can use the beautiful grace and glory of God with each other. And empower one another as long as God supplying the source of the power through us to one another. We can love one another. We can join together. We can help our neighbor. We can call these I've mentioned. We can love them in a way that we could have never loved them before because of what's going on. I want us to have a heightened sense of the love of God, and I want that overflowing and pouring like Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, that the God is through the Holy Spirit has poured, and I mean poured, I mean it is a downpour, it is a, a flood, it's a tsunami of God's love by the Holy Spirit filling in our hearts, overflowing, pressed down, and being pushed out. The source is God. When the inner self or man is fed regularly on the word of God, and seeks the Spirit's will and the decisions of life, you and I can be sure that He will be strengthened and with power through the Holy Spirit. I will be strengthened. You will be strengthened. The believer can be sure that he will be strengthened or she will be strengthened with the power through the Holy Spirit of God. I want us to hear this. Spiritual power is not the mark of a special class of Christian, but it is the mark of every Christian who submits their inner spirit to God's Word and God's Holy Spirit. Like physical growth and strength, spiritual growth and strength, they don't come overnight. And as we discipline our minds and spirits, little spirits, to study God's word and understand it and live by it, we are nourished and strengthened by the very love and the strength of God the Holy Spirit, empowering our lives to do those things that he has committed us to do, desired us to do before the foundation of the world. And as that occurs, what happens to this outer man, outer woman, outer person, it matters less and less because it's the inner that matters. Let me finish with this, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and then part of Philippians. This is good for our time now. 
Paul told the Corinthians, and now he's telling us, God the Holy Spirit is telling us through Paul. Church, we are handicapped on all sides, but we are never frustrated. We might be puzzled, but never in despair. We are persecuted, but we never have to stand it alone. We may be knocked down, but we are never knocked out. Every day we experience something of death of the Lord Jesus so that we may also know the power of life in Jesus in these bodies of ours. Praise God. We're always facing death, but this means that you know more and more of life. Isn't that amazing? Don't you have a brighter, deeper understanding of the precious of life now that this is going on? It's the power of God working. This is the reason why we never collapse. The outward man does not I'm sorry, the outward man does indeed suffer and wear and tear and break down. But every day, the inward man receives fresh strength from God above. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Father, may this be encouraging to our hearts. Father, may we truly understand and know deeper and deeper your love in a way, Father, that gets us up and strengthens us, that it can be passed on to others around us. Father, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us. And Father, blessings are going to be in store like we've never seen before as long as we'll just keep our hearts soft because, Father, there's an advantage of that too. We get to see the beautiful blessings with a soft heart. Father, I thank you for the gifts that these beautiful living stones of this church provide, Father. Father, I thank you for the special love in their heart that they have. Father, they just give out of the precious love of their heart for you. Father, we realize that it's all yours. Father, we love you and thank you. Father, I pray for each one here. Pray for little Erin as she has her baby, Father. Let her know that we're all walking with her, even though she may be by herself. Father, I pray for the Barbers, Father, the one that lives by Steve and Anna, Father. I know that they're loving on her, and I pray for our other little precious little Barb, Father. She's out there at the home by herself, and they don't let visitors come there anymore. Father, I got turned away. But, Father, I can still call. Father, I pray for all the ones that are by themselves. Pray for each family that's here, Father. Continue to lift them up. Father, let this be a time that we can love like we've never loved before. Father, may we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. May this be a renewing of our heart and mind, Father, in a way that it just pleases you, Father, and you get to experience our love for you in difficult times. Father, we love you and thank you. Praise your holy name. Father, I love each of my little sheep out there, Father, as they're listening to the message and those that aren't. Father, may we just glorify you in a way we never have before. Father, thank you for this. Thank you for this time. For it's in the precious name of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Holy of Holies. The Lord God Almighty. Pray this in his precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you all for being here with us today. Um, I'm going to be here. This is where I belong. And I'm going to be preaching. Probably be doing, I'll send you out more emails. I'm going to start a Bible study. Uh, it'll be online. I'll shoot out an email. And those of you that can join, please join. It'll probably be on a Wednesday. Um, the, uh, anyway, it'll probably be on a Wednesday that I'll do that. Be around, well, I know Billy and Jack go to sleep about 7 o'clock at night, so I'll have to do it. I'm just kidding you. I'm just, just kidding you. But probably do it. No, I think they do, really. I'm not kidding. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll shoot that out to y'all. Pe- probably be around. I don't know what time people eat supper and things like that. But you can join us. You join us. I, we'll be studying through some, um, I don't know, storms of life, stress, th- things like that that we'll be doing. Uh, also, I've had questions about people. They want to give their tithes and offerings. And praise, thank you for that. Praise God. It's part of what we, part of what is part of who we are. Uh, on the website, I think Andrew's put, I think our address is, the church address is there. So you're, you're welcome to mail them there if you'd like to. Or you're welcome to save them up until we meet again also. What, whatever, the, whatever the Lord directs your heart to do. Um, I, I hate even mentioning that, but it's part of, the, part of our worship to God is giving our money. And uh, know that he'll go to his kingdom and his glory. So we'll, we'll have that there. If you have a question about that, ask me, call me, text me. And I'll give you directions uh, of what to do with that. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I guess that's about it. Hun, you think of anything? Hun, Ben, Debbie, can you think of anything? Andrew? Heather? I'm not asking you, Jay. You don't know nothing. <laughs> now, <laughs> how, about, how about little uh, Lucas? He doing good? 
fine. God bless you. Love you much. If y'all need anything, you holler. Love you, love you. I'll, uh, I'll be in touch. Call me if you need me. Call me if you need me. Please, please, please. Okay, bye-bye. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs>